Latin America, Human Geography, Part 1. Okay, so now what we'll be discussing um, are the people of Latin America, the human geography, those aspects of Latin America. So let's kind of touch on it, which you'll see now before I start, uh, before we get into the facts, I want you guys to notice the, peop the people of Latin America. Very diverse people, uh, very diverse ethnic groups, uh, very diverse origins, and we will get all into all of these topics um, when we discuss the human geography, okay? But for example, uh, these are medical students in Cuba. These are this, this picture is of different medical students in Cuba. This is of um, in Brazil. This is a young lady doing a Mardi Gras at Brazil. I think this is a picture of some various Native Americans in um, Venezuela. And this is actually a picture of Latin American students who are uh, living in Sydney, Australia at this point in time. So as we get into the human geography of Latin America, one thing I want you guys to realize is a very, very diverse group. And we'll get into this as we move forward. But let's move forward. So we discussed the population of Latin America. And when we say that we mean all three regions of Latin America, Middle America, Central America, South America. 539 million people represent approximately 9% of the world's population. Large land mass, right? We discussed that before. Tremendous um, land area in Latin America, but it's very low population density because of the terrain. It's very mountainous, very hilly areas. So it's very, so you will have in the cities a lot of people, um, but that is only makes up about a third of the country. Two thirds of the country is, is very low population density, or two thirds of Latin America is very low population density. So let's talk about the different ethnic groups that make up Latin America. And there are four distinct ethnic groups that make up Latin America. Uh, the first one that we'll take a look at are the Native Americans. And the Native Americans are the indigenous people to Latin America. Um, they're, inhab they're descendants of Latin America's first inhabitants. And if you recall the lecture or the video on um, North America last week, I discussed that the first inhabitants of North America and South America are people came over from Europe and maybe even people as of late. Um, there's been new evidence that if I'm sorry, that people may even came over from Africa, but definitely from Asia by way of the land bridge that once linked um, Asia to North America and Alaska. Okay. This re this particular time that we're about to discuss the first inhabitants of, of Latin America, this marks the first period of Latin American history and government. We'll discuss the three different histories, the three different periods today. This is the first history. This is the, um, the first period of Latin American history and government. So we'll talk about some of the different Native American empires and then three main ones that we'll focus on today. And I want you guys to take a look at notice the globe and everything in green is Latin America. The first Native American that w empire that we'll discuss are the Mayans. OK, and they were located in central Mexico and Central America. And if you guys think th this is an example of a, a Mayan pyramid, very similar to the pyramids that we'll see in Egypt and also not just the Mayans, but the other the other empires in Latin America, they all had pyramids. They all built their own pyramids as well or variations of these periods. Something else, too, with the Mayans that, that we've been um, that's been top of mind for us lately is that they are the ones who developed the first calendar. And it, remember, if um, everyone is all um, in a everyone is this has been at the forefront of the news because the Mayan calendar predicts that the world ends in 2012 so the mayans this empire they are the ones this is where they were located it's their pyramids examples of their pyramids and they're the people who came up with the mayan calendar the second empire that we'll discuss are the aztecs the aztecs were located in mexico so of course there was a bit of overlapping between them and the mayans and also which i want you guys to think about with the aztecs so they're the ones who had the uh, the fabled city of gold. So they were located in this area. Another cool thing you want you know about the Aztecs is that they um eagles and birds. Eagles and birds were big with them, and you can tell by this warrior 
and his um he has like a a warrior's headdress of of birds. Their feathers and all that good stuff on it. The last one that we'll take a look at are the Incas. And the Incas, the Inca Empire. What I want you guys to understand about the Inca Empire was that it's very vast. It stretched from pretty much the top. It, it went along the Andes Mountains. So it means it went pretty much from the top of the continent of South America all the way to the bottom along the west coast of South America, of the continent of South America. Very vast empire. This is a picture of um, an Incan village with their own. And you can see it looks pretty. You can see the buildings. looks advanced, somewhat advanced. Their buildings carved into the mountains. But I want you to realize that because they were on the mountains, that they had a lot of their, um, they were able to adapt to living in the mountains. And this is a picture of an Incan Moria in South America. The second ethnic group that we'll spend our time covering are the Europeans. And what I want you taking a look at this, this pic these two pictures, they kind of represent the overall theme. Um, the Europeans came, they, they came by boat to, to Latin America. They were mostly the Spanish and the Portuguese. And you see the cross. So they came, of course, they were, were Christians, predominantly Catholics. And the second picture I want you guys to take a look at is um, an illustration of the early Native Americans, the Latin Americans, taking indigenous people of Latin America, um, watching the, the Europeans as they came on land. So getting to the facts when we're discussing the Europeans, they arrived in the late 1400s. Most of the early Euro European settlers in Latin America, of course, we're talking about Central America. Middle America, Central America, and South America, they were Spanish and Portuguese, okay? So they were Spanish and Portuguese. You saw some later, the British, the French, and Germans, they arrived earlier. But pretty much, though, Latin America was dominated by the Spanish and the Portuguese empires. Of course, it would dealt with European colonization. And what colonization is, that is when um, countries take over other countries and turn them into, so when countries take over other countries. During this period of time in history was the time when um, European countries, the European powers, Spain, Great Britain, Portugal, they colonized countries in the world that they were um, technologically superior to. So Latin America, South America, North America, Africa, and even some parts of Asia um, that they were colonized by the European powers. And a question that's on your notes is, what is the dominant language in Latin America? Of course, it's Spanish. And the reason why it's Spanish is because though that is the empire, the Spanish empire is the, is the empire that colonized or much of Latin America. Now, some other languages that are spoken there are English, French, Portuguese, Dutch, Creole, and other variations of dialects of native languages. But overall, the dominant language in Latin America is Spanish. This period of the Europeans arriving, this marks the second period of Latin American history and government, okay? And also, now we're moving on to this, the dominant region in Latin America, of course, is, is Catholicism, um, particularly Roman Catholicism, and it's for the same reason that the language is, is Spanish, the predominant language in Latin America is Spanish, is because it is the dominant re religion of the country that colonized most of Latin America. And so the dominant religion of, of Spain and Portugal was Catholicism. So the dominant religion of Spain and Portugal's colonies will be Catholicism. When European powers took over a nation or when they took over a new land, they either killed or enslaved the indigenous or, na or native people. And they also converted them to their religion. So you'll see that the indigenous peoples of not just Latin America, everywhere in the world, it's a big way that um, Christianity was spread. And so they lost a lot of their native religions or their native customs and religious customs and learned Christianity. And just kind of piggybacking off that point, with these two next two pictures I want you guys to take a look at, this illustrates what basically occurred. I want to take this kind of in the... In the um, in a, in a cartoon, almost like in a cartoon, like in a sequence of events, just look at the pictures. First picture, we have Latin America, we have Spain and Portugal, the Spain and Portuguese arriving, bearing the cross, bringing Christianity. You see the second picture, 
you see the native people looking. Um, you see the native people looking, curious. They initially befriended the, the Portuguese and the Spanish, but the Spanish and Portuguese eventually what is represented in, in this third picture is that because of superior army, superior technology, not so much manpower, but superior technology and the fact of, of chemical warfare or biological warfare, which was at this time was that millions and millions of Native Americans were killed not necessarily through weapons and the weapons killed a lot of them but it was the fact of smallpox um the people of the americas had not built up a, a tolerance to smallpox smallpox was something new to them that the people of europe that the europeans coming over had already developed a natural defense for so not so smallpox did more to conquer the people of latin america than any weapon or ship or anything smallpox killed more people than, than weapons and just kind of piggybacking on what I mentioned before uh, these two pictures illustrate the they represent the people being conquered of, of the native Latin Americans being conquered and enslaved um, then, then they were after they were conquered they were used as slave labor the majority of them died of diseases and it's as a result of this as a result of the majority of Latin Americans um, either escaping or dying of disease Africans um, where people from Africa, enslaved Africans, were brought over as a slave, as a, as a source of free labor. But the first um, slaves in Latin in the Americas were the indigenous people, and they either would die, they either died or escaped because they knew the terrain better. That brings us to the third ethnic group that you will find in Latin America were Africans, and these people, um, Africans, arrived in the late 1500s as enslaved people in Latin America right around the time as they arrived in North America and slavery ended in the region in the 1800s of the early to late 1800s right around similar to the same time frame that it ended in North America so this is when we start seeing introduction of, of Africans into Latin America and the last ethnic group that we see a lot of, and that last ethnic group, um, predominant ethnic group in Latin America, are Asians. Um, and these Asians, the Asians first settled in Latin America in the 1800s, and there are large communities of Asians living in the Caribbean, uh, particularly Jamaica, particularly Jamaica. And these are different people of, of Jamaican and Asian descent, Jamaican and Chinese descent specifically. It's a famous reggae singer billionaire and this is uh, Patrick Chung who plays football for he's a J Chinese Jamaican citizen who plays football for the New England Patriots so Asians are the fourth ethnic group this brings us to now the modern history of Latin America and we'll talk about it briefly really really briefly just going over the main points of the things I want you guys to understand um, because of different, because of the way that it was set up, it because of the fact that you had slavery, and then you had the indigenous people just as well as you had slavery, you had the native Latin Americans either as slaves or you had them as pretty much in slaves or peasants. Um, it built up a lot of resentment between um, the native Latin Americans, the native Latin Americans, and the Europeans. This led to a lot of revolutions. Okay. So many Latin American countries, um, they gained their independence from their colonial masters in Europe, um, starting in the 1800s. And some of them were, some of them still remained under foreign control. And we'll take a look at some of the different, these are pictures of different um, guerrilla or fighters or different revolutionaries throughout Latin American history. Uh, we have Mexico, I'm sorry, Mexico, Che Guevara. These two guys, these three guys are generals from Mexico. Uh, this is Che Guevara. This is, I cannot pronounce these, <laughs> these gentlemen's names, but I'll tell you a little bit about them. This is Bolivia. General Bolivia worked to, um, he worked to free the northern part of the country or the northern part of the continent of Latin America, of, of South America. Um, he was eventually killed. We have Che Guevara who worked with Fidel Castro to not only liberate Cuba, but he also participated in liberations in um, Latin America as well as the Congo 
in Africa. He was killed by the CIA. Also, this is a famous Mexican general um, who had a big part in protecting the people of southern Mexico. And he died around 1920. And this current gentleman is a leader of a Mexican revolution. Uh, his, his, his identity is unknown now. So when he works, uh, he's working for the, to make sure that the people of southern Mexico are represented. Talking about all this, though, this kind of lets us to um, leads us to the realization that class structures in Latin America are very rigid, much more rigid than we have in the United States. Very little opportunity for upward mobility. If you're born poor, it's hard to pull yourself out of poverty. So that means that these existing class structures have made it very difficult for people to govern themselves in Latin America because it is extremely hard for people to not be extremely poor. People who are extremely poor, it's hard for them to pull themselves out of poverty. Um, Latin America also has a lot of dictators. Okay, And also I mentioned earlier there's a tremendous disparity between the rich and the poor and a lot of the rich a lot of the wealth in Latin America is concentrated in the hands of few people. We call that an oligarchy. And there are a lot of poor people, very small, underdeveloped middle class. Um, also, this has led to different struggles to end the corrupt governments because the oligarchies, the people, the small number of people who are in charge, they control the government. So they control the government. They look out for themselves and their friends. So it makes it very, very hard um, for to have stable governments in Latin America and it also makes it hard for them to have stable governments for a long period of time it makes it hard for the economies to grow it makes it hard for the economies to develop it makes it hard to improve the infrastructure of the com countries as well as to encourage investments from foreign countries so these are some different homework questions make sure you answer these in complete sentences um, how is the wide gap between the rich and poor led to revolutions in Latin America. And I just want you guys to use common sense about this, okay? And I want you to think about this. Latin America is different than the United States. You have people who are very, very poor and people who are very, very rich. Not a lot of people in middle class, okay? Most of you guys, pretty much everyone listening to this right now, will be considered middle class. You do not have that, okay? Very, very poor people. Most of the people are very, very poor. How is the fact that the majority of the people in the country or a region of very, very poor. How has that led to revolutions and unstable governments? Also, what does this, what do these unstable governments, how do they affect foreign investment in the region? All right, the end. Make sure you highlight the concepts um, that need to be highlighted on your notes outline. Also, that you answer everything in complete sentences, answer the other questions in complete sentences. Have a good evening. I'll see you in class.